Eunice Muse's incredible body transformation to become unstoppable. The Valencia midfielder is one of the sensations of the World Cup with the US. Eunice Musa is celebrating his birthday in the middle of the World Cup. The Valencia player turns 20 on Tuesday and he is possibly at his best moment professionally so far. His debut in elite football was in September 2020, more than two years ago, and he has not had an easy journey to reach this point. Musa's breakthrough The American footballer is celebrating his birthday on the same day as Iran vs USA. Every day he takes another step forward. In the short term, debut in a World Cup against Wales. He was a star, but he could barely complete 60 minutes in full physical conditions. He had to be substituted. Questions were asked about whether he is slightly out of shape at the moment. In the second match against England, he was able to play the whole game. And he put in a great performance against a country he has links to. There was an emotional element included. Musa is just 20 years old but he has already been in circulation for three seasons at the top level. He made his debut in Spain on September 14, 2020. The match was Valencia vs Levante. And he was very impressive. Since then he has been adding kilometers in his legs that have served him to reach a World Cup at that young age. Shocked by Musa's physical growth. His closest friends, who are those who live with him on a daily basis, point out to MARCA the striking physical change that this footballer has shown throughout this short time. He is a beast. We are even surprised. He continues to grow, they said. Some would say that this is normal for a young player in his growth phase, but his efforts to improve have made him a physical rock. The day he knows how to fit that physical power with the tempo of the matches, he will be a player with a very high value in professional soccer, and it is in him to take the next definitive step. Nasser al khalifi me leaving PSG. Is it a joke? The president of the French club talks to MARCA about the World Cup in Qatar and makes it clear that investment into the club will continue. Nasser al khalifi has left his office on Avenue Emile Zola in Boulogne to settle in Doha during the Qatar World Cup as one of the most influential ambassadors of his country abroad. As a Qatari citizen, he also speaks to MARCA about the criticism coming from the West for holding the World Cup in his country. He is the president of PSG with an open heart, the defense of his country and his people, the future of PSG and Mbappe, the Super League, the probable departure from the Parc des Princes and his premier Patel project. Hugh, what's it like for Qatar to be hosting the World Cup? It's amazing to have the World Cup in Qatar in this region. It brings the whole region together, across cultures and languages, ages and religions. In the last few days, Morocco and Belgium, Tunisia and Saudi Arabia, Qatar and other teams of the world all playing, crazy atmospheres, passionate, so passionate about sports, the facilities, the stadiums, the fans, it's fantastic. All the people here are so proud to receive the world in Qatar. Also it's for families. There is no hostile environment or crowd issues like you see in Europe. It is such a warm and inclusive atmosphere, everyone celebrating together. Hugh, do you think that there is a vision that is not actually the reality in Qatar? Because we are always hearing things about the country. We are not perfect. We have made mistakes, like everyone. But we have developed as a nation and a society fastest than any other before. What frustrates me is that people talk about Qatar and they've never been in Qatar. I don't understand. They need to come here to see for themselves, the people, the culture, the facilities, the values, the humility we have here, everything. All the Qatari people are so proud and so honored to receive the world. They open their houses, their hearts, that is our culture, that is our tradition, that is what Qatari people are. It's in our DNA to receive people, to open our hearts and our houses for everyone. It's a different culture than in Europe where in some places it's not normal to invite someone into your house if you don't know them. But here our door is always open. During this World Cup I've seen some many people open their houses, to meet new friends, to share food. That is the Qatari people, and they are so proud. Hugh, as a Qatarian, when you hear about the human rights in Qatar, I will say it again. We are not perfect. Like everyone, mistakes have been made. But we are good people. We are nice people. We welcome people. We care about people. Remember we're a small nation, so friendship is important. I also think there have been issues before with other World Cups and major events. But the scrutiny here has been completely disproportionate. But we'll keep our good grace and look forward positively. To give you context on what it means for the region and our people, I am not involved in the organization of the World Cup, I have nothing to do with the organization, but as all Qatari people today, they feel they are organizing it for the world. Kids, women, men. All people, young generation, old generation, everybody Qatari and non-Qatari people all trying to make the tournament a success. That's our DNA and our culture. Q, who are your favorites for the World Cup? Of course I support my PSG players 100%, and of course first my national team, Qatar. I think there may be a few surprises too, of course Brazil, even Argentina coming back. And we have Spain, definitely Portugal, France, strong teams, and Germany if they qualify will come strong. Spain, the national team of Spain. 
They are young and playing together. They are a very good team. Q. There are a lot of rumors in France that once the World Cup in Qatar is over, the story is finished. That's the end. Is that true or just rumors? You make me laugh. I don't know if I should answer this question to be honest, because it's a joke you know. We are about to enter phase 2 where we'll see some amazing growth. Our most exciting chapters are still to come for PSG and our group. Q. Park de France. What is the situation right now? Are you leaving? Thinking of leaving? An agreement with the council? Our first option is to stay. But I think the city council does not want us to stay. They are pushing us out. For five years we have been discussing with them. Every time it's false promises. Today, tomorrow, this election, next election, we are tired of this. We need a proper settlement. I absolutely love Parc des Princes. It's our history and I respect this more than anything. And staying has always been our option one. But I don't think they want us there. Around 80 million have invested in the stadium out of our own pocket. But it's not our stadium, who else would do this? We want a stadium like the other clubs. We need to increase our revenues to have a better stadium for our fans and more fans want to come in than we can facilitate. The city council think we are joking, but we are not joking and are totally very serious about other options. We are looking at other options because I don't think we are welcome at Park Des Princes anymore. They are playing games with us. Five years we are tired. Q. New investor in PSG. MBAP leaving. We have significant investor interest in our club, which is fantastic. They want to have minority interests, and we are talking to them very openly. In these discussions, the club's valuation is over 4 billion, that's not a goal, it's the valuation of the market. It's fantastic. We built a brand and a business from the ground up, and we're now seeing the results of our work. Remember, this is just the beginning. Our project is long-term and ambitious. On MBAP. Every month. Every week, every day I have to answer this, he has just renewed his contract and everyone is happy. The team hasn't lost a game all season, and we've now sold out 100 matches in a row. Q. How is your new venture premiere, Patel? It's fantastic. What we have achieved in less than a year is miraculous. The tour is going everywhere. The players are at the heart of everything. We have some major partners looking to invest and join us. The events we've had in Madrid, Rome, Qatar, Argentina and now Mexico, and many others, they're world-class events. Patel is an enormous passion of mine, and we're building something very special. Q. A final word on the Super League and the decision on the 15th of December. To be honest, I feel sad for them because they have proved time and time again that they just don't understand football and its ecosystem. Football is not a legal contract, it is a social contract. When the fans were protesting in the streets when the not-so-Super League launched and failed, they were not shouting about legal commitments. Football is a bond between clubs and players, between players and fans, between fans and communities. That will never change.